In this film, we explore the depths of the thick rainforest in far north Queensland to find some spectacular tree frogs, many of which are endangered. A lot of these tree frogs can be found way up high in the canopy or down below in the crystal clear beautiful rainforest streams where many rare frogs rely on this unique habitat for their tadpoles. We do the majority of searching at night when the male frogs start calling. This is the best way to find a particular species of frog. Doing this, we encounter a lot of animals we don't often see during the day. Always a good find finding these. Oh, so cool. So, Steve and I have been doing a lot of research on the frogs around where we live and we found out that where we live is probably the best spot in the world to find frogs. There are so many species and many endangered and rare and they live in habitat just like this. These rocky, clear waterways. Beautiful habitat for them. I've got a good feeling we're going to find something cool tonight. Me too. We spent hours each night trying to find the frogs for this film. Many we pass by briefly as they are super common species like the stony creek frog. What we just found? Just found a waterfall frog. Oh, wicked. Let's have a look. Endangered species. Oh. oh, I've never... I've been living here for years now and I've never seen one in the wild before. I knew I'd find something cool. Our first target was this unique frog species called the waterfall frog and I'm sure there's a few of you that haven't heard of this frog. And I'm sure you guessed by its name that they're almost found exclusively around waterfalls and fast flowing water. I've had to mute the background of these clips because the waterfalls are just so loud. So loud in fact, hardly anyone has ever heard its calls because its call is so quiet and the waterfalls have overpowering noise. By day, the waterfall frog shelters in rock crevices besides the waterfalls. They love this misty, cooler habitat, and coming back at night is a good way to find them, as they like to explore fairly far from their day resting area. They also like to live communally, so once you find one, you usually find a lot more. We gotta be careful walking around these slippery rocks at night, it's easier to slip and fall in, but I just spot one just around the corner here. And this one's so much more beautiful. Oh, no, I'm just there, as you come over. Where? Oh, beautiful, I'll get a zoom in shot first. That's the waterfall frog is an endangered species, and it isn't just habitat loss that's causing its decline. There is actually a type of fungus that thrives on using frogs as a host. It's called the chytrid frog fungus, and it has caused many extinctions in frogs already. Some of the frogs in this film are endangered because of this reason. We started this film just at the end of wet season, so we knew we had limited time to find these frogs, as they may stop calling soon. Rain means one thing, time to go frog hunting. How beautiful is this place? The next frog we are after is the common mist frog, but don't let the name fool you. These frogs aren't so common anymore and are now actually endangered. Once again, we look for habitat by day and come back at night. We just tried one spot and had no success, so we're going to go explore a different creek that we think this common mist frog might be living at. So, yeah, see what frogs we can find and what other rare species we can find. I thought I just heard one. Then again, maybe I didn't. Damn. As Kyle's hiking through all this, keep in mind all this vegetation here is the prickly wait a while. And if you're not familiar with the wait a while of North Queensland, also known as Lawyer Cane, this is what we're contending with. It wasn't easy. We had to deal with run ins with spiders. Very bad spot to have a spider. Giant centipedes. Huge centipede up here. 
Blue legs. Astigmalta rub right. Ooh, a blue legged rainforest one. And hundreds of leeches. I don't think we don't suffer for you guys finding all these animals. I am absolutely covered in leeches right now. This is the freshest water you can get anywhere. Beautiful cold. This runs off a big mountain. We did a lot of research on frogs prior to this film. We use modern technology now to help us find and locate frogs. The Frog ID app helps us really well because they have recordings of frogs that we can use out in the field. We got a miss frog. Nice. But someone won't move for us. I'm more excited, we can actually hear endangered mist frogs, a target species of our uh, quest to film rare frogs. But we got a scrub path in, in the way, so I can't get down. I'll have to find another way. You couldn't get it in any more jungle looking setting, could you? No. It's got like everything, all the epiphytes and so cool. Pretty small. I think he's not too big. I'd say two actually, two metres I reckon. What a beautiful, beautiful little scrubby. Just sitting here in ambush position, waiting for something to come past, like a rat or a mouse. What have we found? A long search tonight, but we found a common mist frog. <laughs> and it's a pretty precarious spot to find one. We've got to be careful because there's a giant waterfall just down here. I think we finally found them. That is so cool. We've been hearing them all night, but we haven't been able to find them. There is another type of mist frog called the mountain mist frog, but sadly due to chytrid fungus, it is now probably extinct and it hasn't been seen since the early 90s. They were once found in remote and high altitudes. I like to believe they're still somewhere out there in amongst the mountains. Well, that's two endangered frogs already. And the best thing about looking for these frogs is the beautiful, clear, fresh water. It's so nice. But we got no reason to hold these frogs. They're not going anywhere, which is awesome. We can get up right, nice and close to them, and observe them without having to hold them. This way, we protect their skin. I noticed something croaking nearby, and I can't believe it, it's another endangered frog. And another one. These lace lids look so cool when they sit flat on a leaf. I always thought they were a lot bigger frog, but when you see them in real life, they're quite small. They're almost similar size to the mist frog, though the mist frog is slightly smaller. When the two species are together, it can actually be kind of hard to ID both of them. The way that gives away the lace lid is its large black eyes. Unlike most typical tree frogs that you might see in your garden, these frogs have adapted to life in these fast flowing, clear water streams. These cooler streams that are rich with oxygenated water are necessary for the survival of the tadpoles. Oh. Hello. Uh, hello. I think we've got a white-lipped green tree frog here. A very, very stunning frog species up here. Convenient he's on this sign. Warning crocs, more like warning frogs. Oh, this is very pretty white-lipped. Oh, nice. So these are one of the biggest tree frogs that you get up here. They got that famous white lip, and that is how we ID them very quickly. They're very closely related to Latoria cerulea, the green tree frog. And so that white lip on the bottom is how you tell the difference. And um, sometimes they can be yellow colours. So they can come in some pretty beautiful colours. 
They can be red or yellow in colour as well as green, typically green. The males have a green throat pouch that they puff out. I'm not sure about this one. Well, this has got green under its throat. In the breeding yes. season, the males uh, get red on the back legs, the inside of the back legs, and on the hands and whatnot. And it's a real symbol of the wet tropics, or not just wet tropics, all of North Queensland. Da glump went the little green frog one day, and it went glump, 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 glump. But we all know Queensland frogs say, Hey mate, can you chuck us a tinny of 4x? The white-lipped tree frog is not only the largest tree frog in Australia, it's also the largest tree frog in the world. These frogs are extremely common in the wet tropics, especially around paperbark swamps. It sure is wet at the moment. Look at all this lichen and moss. Now the next frog we're trying to look for is very difficult to find in the rainforest because it looks just like all this stuff. Let's see if we can find it. The next target tree frog was one that took me a few days to find, but not because it's rare or anything, it's because its camouflage is just so good. This is because this frog prefers the mossy areas of the rainforest. It also usually lives very high up in the canopy, and it's usually only the males that come down to coal after rain. I heard this male green-eyed tree frog calling, and it took me over one hour of solid looking to find him. The call is an odd clicking sound, just like and I finally spotted him amongst the moss. I did notice a female way up in the canopy, probably 30 metres up. I don't think she was coming down anytime soon, and the females are a lot larger. But finding this male for me was one of my best frog finds because it was so confusing. So this is the wood frog, Papurana damelli. It's Australia's only Papurana. Do it, Carl. Do the thing. My calls aren't as good as Carl's. <laughs> Doesn't like me. This isn't a tree frog, but I had to include it. Why? Because this is Australia's only rana species, meaning that this frog is in the same family as the American and African bullfrogs. And here's what he's calling for. He's a nice girl. I think that in most species of frogs, the females are generally a lot larger than the males. We head back into the mountains to find some more rare frogs. These mountains have a very mystical vibe to them. So we actually got two endangered frogs here. A male common mist frog. And I heard him croaking on this leaf. Beautiful little frog. So what we're looking for is an extinct frog related to this frog. And they live in this very similar environment. Another endangered frog. Don't want a finger. Here, I think that's a waterfall frog. Let's go find out. Waterfall? Yep. A beautiful one too. The reason why we are filming these rare frogs is because one day this footage is all we might have left of them. You've got to conserve animals like this. It's absolutely vital. Crystal clear, fresh mountain water. Beautiful, nice and sweet. There's plenty of obstacles in the rainforest, and it's also hard to know where to start looking for these frogs. Our tip is don't forget to look in the trees. Many frogs are above your head. Victoria Jungy, I think, or Will Coxy. Actually, I think it might be Will Coxy. Shows you how much I know about frogs. Not a whole lot. We're learning heaps making this film.
Again, not a tree frog, but these nursery frogs are really cool little frogs. They make a lot of beeping noises throughout the rainforest. Found this one in the backyard. This is Australia's most famous frog, the green tree frog. And they're really common all across northern Australia, except they're not so common out in the wet tropics. More common is the white-lipped tree frog, Latoria infrafrenata. This is Latoria cerealia. What an icon. We love our green tree frogs. Probably all Australians' favourite frog. Sitting on this cushion. Might be a she. And she's just done a big buggy poop. Right there. So that's how you ID a frog poo. It looks like that. If you're wondering if you got frogs around the house. Now these have got to be one of my favourite frogs. They make great pets as they are a very hardy frog. I once had them as pets for 15 years, but they can live past 20. I just realised something. I don't know if she's trying to eat it, but there is a gecko sitting right under her. Get off me! You're suffocating me! Maybe she was trying to eat it and missed. Or maybe it's just coincidence. That's quite strange. Coming close to the second frog coming up, these are my favourite frogs in Australia. Now one feature all tree frogs have in the Latoria genus is these big toe pads. And that's to help them climb. And they can stick on surfaces, even glass, that are vertical. Another feature common in the Latoria is big strong back legs. And they can jump quite far usually. I don't know what this frog's doing, maybe it plans on eating it. And it's got a pin down. And during the day and the drier times too, this frog actually lives, I've seen it. I was trying to fix my aircon. Up in this tube behind the aircon unit. The next frog is an extremely common frog up here in the tropics and it can be found in all kinds of environments. However, its preferred habitat is these grassy areas near farmlands. After heavy rain, these frogs come out, but when it's dry like this, they literally all just disappear. I wonder where they disappear to. My other favourite frog, of course, is the graceful tree frog, also known as the dainty tree frog. It is my favourite frog because they are smallish, have beautiful colours, and they just look so cool when they lie flat on a leaf. I really like the colour of their belly. It's a really nice orange colour. And their cold can be really strange and eerie. Sometimes they end up on the other side of Australia. This is because they hide in the banana boxes that get sent to the markets. One time I found one in Perth in a banana box. In the making of this film, I filmed many different types of species of frog croaking. It's really quite a sight. These desert tree frogs are widespread across Australia and they kind of sound like seagulls fighting over chips. The eastern dwarf tree frog is a common frog in backyards, but unfortunately the coal can be drained out by the introduced cane toad. I couldn't do this film without explaining the cane toad and what a catastrophe they are to native frogs and other wildlife. It should be native frogs laying their eggs in here, yet it's overrun by toads. <laughs> the 
Would you listen to that? What you got to say, Mr. Toad? It's not your fault that you're an invasive species and you're unfairly prejudiced against? About 90 years ago, in the 1930s, these cane toads were introduced not once, not twice, but many times because they'd release them and they just kept dying off. They were introduced... Oh, it just squirted all over me. Now, they were introduced to eat the cane beetle, which is a big problem for the sugar farmers up here. But the problem is these toads cannot climb and the cane beetle lives at the top. So it was stupid from the start. And not only was, were they unsuccessful in introducing them many times, in fact, we're quite near the spot where they were first introduced into Australia. But yeah, it took them many times to, to get this population of toads established. And they did nothing with the cane beetle, but they've absolutely caused a lot of problems with, um, with the native wildlife, and particularly the native amphibians. They compete with them, they eat them, they even eat snakes. These cane toads have very few predators because of these poison glands you can see here. You can see on a dead one here we came across the poisonous fluid leaking out its glands. Oh, that stinks so bad. Now, the interesting thing with the population of cane toads up in North Queensland, they're decimating areas at the moment like the Kimberley and previously decimated places like Kakadu. But we're actually noticing the wildlife is bouncing back a bit here. It'll never come back to what it was before the introduction of this species. But there is a new equilibrium being established. A few things like keelback snakes are learning to prey on them and the other species are learning how to avoid them and not be preyed upon by these guys and to compete less. So we are seeing some numbers of some species come back, which is a great thing. Uh, we've actually eaten cane toad legs before, and we're going to make a video on that for you in the future. But I'm not that hungry at the moment, so I'm going to release him back into the wild to be free. Isn't it magic? When it starts to flood during the end of the wet, there is one frog that is on our mind. This frog spends the majority of its time high up in the canopy, but they will descend to the ground after heavy rains. It's the orange-thighed tree frog, probably Australia's most beautiful species of frog. These frogs have a very interesting whiny, wailing call, and I was hoping to catch this guy croak on film. If you look close enough, you can see a mosquito on his nose. Hey, that's not an orange-thighed frog calling. There's a graceful tree frog calling right underneath him. Notice how some start calling in the background, about to trigger this male to call. A graceful tree frog and orange-thighed are very similar looking frogs, but notice how very different their calls are. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that video on tree frogs. Unfortunately, we didn't find the mountain mist frog that we were after, but it's not going to stop us and we're going to keep persisting and uh, trying to film what we can. It was a different film, um, frogs this time. I'm sure you used to all the snakes, but we really enjoyed making this film. Make sure you guys like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe if you want to see frogs and other herb content. Please. Please, I'm begging. Yeah, mate, how about we go look for more frogs, eh, yeah, man? That might be good enough.